What's going on guys? Welcome to your 35th Java tutorial. What we're going to get into is working with our, our JFrame again. Uh, because we've added some components, but these components don't do anything. If we have, you know, we love bacon and we love cheese, and we hit, you know, our button and it doesn't do anything, it's the same as if those buttons or those components weren't checked. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow these components to give us some information. We're going to see if these uh, checkboxes are checked. If they are, they're going to display some additional text when we hit our button one. So, buckle up. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to add a string to our, our activity or um, our application here that our whole class can use. So right within, within our class we're going to establish a string called s. We're going to set this uh, just to be, you know, nothing for right now. And then within our first window uh, again, this gets called, this is our constructor. We're going to set s equal to be um, basically whatever text we had within our j option pane down here. So we're just going to cut that out. And we're going to replace that with the s variable. This is the string that we're setting up right now. And we're just going to paste that uh, for a constructor to start out with, good job, kid, you harvested your corn. And bam, there we go. The next thing that we're going to do is we want to add a new line each time we add to this string. So all we're going to do is we're going to hit a space after our um, excl exclamation mark and then we're just going to do a backslash in and that's going to add a new line for us. So if we add to the string it's just going to be on the line below. So now that we have everything set up let's go down to our checkboxes. Uh, down here we call them CB and CB2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add an if statement. Uh, for both of them and we're just going to refer to our first checkbox which says do you love bacon so we're just going to say CB and we have all these methods that we can use either a method that refers to a J component because a J checkbox is a J component or there's methods specifically for the J checkbox and we also have some component methods as well but the one that we want to use is called is uh, selected that's going to be a boolean statement it's going to either return a true or false depending on whether the checkbox is selected. If it is, what we're going to do is we're going to say s is plus equal to, again s is a string that we just set up at the beginning of this tutorial, we're going to say plus equal to and then we're going to say of course you love bacon and uh, then we're just going to add a new line again so we're going to do a backslash n and well bam there we're done. Now all we're going to do is we're just going to cut this out or copy this and paste it again and we're going to refer to our second checkbox which is checkbox 2, CB2. We're just again going to check if it's selected. If it is, we're going to say, of course, you love bacon. Um, but this time we're going to say, of course, you love cheese. And let's test this out. We'll save it, run it, see what's going on. So right now, none of our checkboxes are checked. Now they are. When we hit our button, it's still not producing the text that we want. The reason this is happening is because we define these methods within clear constructor. So, so the first time um, this application is built, is it's going to run through everything and initially our checkboxes are not checked. It only runs through this once uh, and they're initially not checked so it's not going to add any strings to our initial string that we set up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this code here. We're going to paste it above our JPane um, option. So we're just going to paste it there and it's giving us some errors now because we haven't defined what CB is or CB2 yet because we define those down here as you can see. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut out this line of code. Um, probably be better if we actually cut out our whole button where we add the action listener. Not where we define the button because that's right here. But this is where we added our action listener. We're just going to cut that out and scroll down to the bottom of our constructor and paste it down here so we know um, everything that has been defined. And we're still getting some errors because it's going to say we want to change checkbox to final. What we're actually going to do is we're going to scroll up to where our checkboxes are here and we're going to cut out this and uh, delete this as well and we're going to scroll up to our class again up here we're just going to say J checkbox and we're going to say CB and CB2 um, so now we've defined both of our checkboxes we haven't set them up yet uh, once our constructor gets called it will define those checkboxes for us the question that we want to ask and also once our button is clicked, it'll look for the action listener. The action listener is now going to check if those checkboxes are selected. If they are, it's going to add to our string. And then we're just going to display our string here um, within our option pane. So let's save this, run it. All right, so 
Uh, I noticed one other thing that we're going to have to change, but let's just check this out. We're going to say, do you love bacon? We're going to hit button one. It's going to say, good job, kid. You harvested your corn, and of course you love bacon, so that's okay. Now we're going to unselect our bacon, um, and we're going to say, do you love cheese? Hit button one, and now we still have our first line of code that, of course you love bacon, of course you love cheese. That's because we never reestablished our string because it still added that line of code to our string when we hit our button the first time, and now adds this line of code to our string as well. So we could also, you know, just hit the button again, and as you can see, it adds um, some more lines of code to our string, and this would go on and on. So all we're going to do real quickly is cut and cut some code and replace it. Um, nothing new that we haven't done like 10 times in this tutorial already. So we're just going to go up to our string where we defined our string S and we're going to cut this line of code and now we're going to go back to our um, where our button action listener is and within here this is where we're going to define our S. I should have thought about that a little bit uh, earlier within the tutorial but you know it's been a long day long cold snowy day out here so let's just save this and uh, run it and hopefully now we will not get uh, those errors actually you know I I wanted to show those errors because you guys are just learning Java and now you get to see like the process of you know solving errors and all that stuff so uh, yeah that's a good example there and as you can see our bacon works we put our bacon and our cheese and it only has one line or two lines of code I guess which we'd expect we we'll uncheck our do you love bacon and we run it again and now our application is working it's processing those check boxes and we've done some uh, error checking and problem solving so hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial again sorry if it went a little bit quick or we were just moving everything around but hopefully you guys follow along and have a good one see you later